Hey everyone, Garbage here. So recently I've learned something kind of surprising about making video games, specifically about video game animations. Uh, right now I'm making some shooting animations for the multiplayer game I'm working on, and I've learned that getting these things to look good can be a bit counterintuitive. To make any animation, the general approach is to break it down into its components. First, you start with the horizontal movement, how much your gun moves back and forth when you shoot it. Then you add in the vertical movement, which when combined with the horizontal movement creates this circular motion which many people find visually appealing. And then you can add in some rotation as well to give the gun some kick, again focusing on one axis at a time, and what you end up with is a complete shooting animation. And because you've animated each component individually, you can easily go back and make adjustments to specific movements to fine tune your animation. And by itself, this shooting animation may look perfectly fine to you, but things get a bit frantic when you play the animation several times a second. like when you're shooting an automatic weapon. And there's a lot of movement going on and it can be very distracting. And so one way you can deal with this is by decreasing the intensity of the animation, make everything move a little bit less. And while it may look incredibly underwhelming at first, the benefit is that when it's being played multiple times a second, it's a much cleaner animation. And you'll find that a lot of video games do this. Games like Valorant and Halo hardly move their guns at all when shooting. Apex Legends and CSGO have a bit more movement in their animations, but they still keep it pretty conservative, relying more on good sound design and visual effects to create that sense of power. But not every weapon needs this kind of treatment. Oftentimes, powerful weapons like Magnum revolvers will have very exaggerated animations because they're hand cannons and they shoot slow enough that even large movements stay clean and readable, unlike with fast firing automatic weapons where the animation is just a fuzzy blur that's over in a fraction of a second. I think a good rule to follow, at least when it comes to shooting animations, is that you don't want your gun to move so much that it loses its shape. And if that means cranking down the intensity of the animation, then so be it. Sometimes less is more. Hope you learned something today. Come check out my second channel where I stream and post clips of all sorts of games most days of the week. Like, subscribe, and bell. Links to everything, including my Twitter and Discord, down below. And as always, have a nice day.